greatest in the world of sports. This is Chalk Them Up. You're listening to Chalk Them Up on WPGU 107.1. We're here with Boston Globe columnist Bob Ryan. Um, a lot of talk this week about decertification in the NBA. Um, do you see it happening, Bob? And um, are the players who are leading this charge the ones who are truly representative of the entire NBA population? And what can that do for the players? Uh, the decertification would require 30% of the players to approve, which, which most of the experts, and believe me, I do not even want to get... I, I can't even wrap my head around the, the, the details because they're, they're so utterly boring and to me irrelevant. Uh, uh, but you need 30% of the players, and it's doubtful that they go to 30%. Uh, if they were to go get, get it, though, that would pretty much sabotage everything. The, you know, the owners would retaliate by not negotiating, and that would be the end of the season. So if they want the end of the season, then they get the 31% that they need, and, and, and uh, that will take care of that. Uh, there's enough problems at the other side with owners who don't want to play to, to where the end of the, se the season is in jeopardy to start with. But I would kind of just guarantee it. So if that's what they want, go ahead, right ahead, and be certified. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that. Bob, we've talked on air that maybe if there was a shortened season that veteran teams may have a better opportunity of winning the title. How do you think your Celtics would fare if there was a shortened season? You know, that, that's another thing I haven't even bothered to waste five seconds thinking about. I know that people <laughs> believe that. And, and if they believe that, that's fine. I guess in the abstract it makes sense. That's all I can say. Okay. Uh, so you do not think that the Celtics would oh, be... I mean, it makes sense. Older players, fewer games, fresher legs. Uh, yeah, okay, blah, 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 fine. I, I, I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you right now, I love this game, and I'm, and I'm exasperated with what's going on, and, and I'm not, I'm not pretty much in a wait when it's over posture. Now, I'm very aggravated. Uh, I haven't thought about all these things. I, I, I really haven't. I mean, I know people are saying these things. I take note of it. I need to know these things because I go on TV shows, and I have to you know, sound like I know what's going on, and that's fine. But believe me, I'm just so frustrated and angry. Uh, yes, it makes sense that the older Celtics and the older San Antonio Spurs would be beneficial, would benefit theoretically more than younger teams. But uh, really, it's not, a, it's not very far into my thinking. All right, Bob, then the question is, do you think there will be an NBA season at all? Yes, I still do. I cannot believe Thank you. I love the Thank you. It's going to be sabotaged, but I know, I'm going to tell you this. I was confident on, let's say, day Saturday. On Thursday, when I wrote, the last thing I wrote, I believed firmly that there was no way that, that the idiots would sabotage this league on both ends. And now after, what happened, after where we are today, now the meeting... As we speak, they're supposed to be 4 o'clock Eastern, and, and, and with, I mean, it's a sea of negativity. Nobody thinks anything good is going to come out of this, although the mediator, George Cohen, is back. Uh, I hope that he can, you know, talk some sense into him. Uh, there's less chance of there being a season than there was two days ago. Uh, let's see what happens with this mediation thing today. What do you think the eventual split will be? You think 52-48? Or being... not, the, the owners, I can tell you right now, the players... This is what I don't understand. What part of the owners' resolve uh, that it's not going over 50 that the players do not understand? They, they, from the beginning of this, going back two years ago, when, when, when we could see the little storm clouds gathering on the horizon, we were aware that there were owners who were happier not playing than playing. They told us that. The players obviously didn't believe that. They may not still believe that. Well, that's the case. So they got an offer at 50-50. Stern told them the next offer won't be as good. They don't seem to believe that. Well, they better believe it. It's not going to be as good. And and what alternative? I don't understand the thinking of this player's side. What alternative do they have? They're going to start their own league. They're going to come up. They're going to, this is this is not like 1966 when we had a 10 team NBA and you could not find cities and start an ABA. <laughs> this is not that. It's not 1960 and there was an eight, uh, 12 team NFL and you go out and start an, an, an AFL. We're way beyond that. And the, and the arenas aren't there and they're committed to the. There's no way to do it. They have to live with the NBA. And I don't really, this is like ABC to me. The players have lost. They have lost, lost, lost. They went from 57, to, to, and even if they get to 52, they've lost 5%. That's the way it's going to be. They might as well suck it up and play. I don't understand what they think they're going to accomplish. No, Bob, I... And by the way, I don't say I'm not sympathetic to them, but this is reality. I'm a pragmatist and, and, and in these matters. I don't like the owners. I think they're despicable in, in many ways as a group, as a body. Not every one individually, but as a body, they're despicable and, and, and greedy. But but there are a lot of them do have problems. And, and unfortunately, what they call the whiny owners, I've been reading that phrase now, you know, have, have a, a, there's enough of them to block passage of a reasonable deal. 
The players have to understand that. They've lost because when it's all said and done, they will have a great deal. They just won't have as good a deal as they used to have. It's not like they're going to be plunged into poverty. This is not the case. Sorry. Now, Bob, I, I understand you're frustrated, so I, I apologize for harping on it, but what do you think is Billy Hunter's role in these talks? Do you think he's been helpful or actually negative to the talks? I think that Billy Hunter uh, should have informed his population, his constituents, that, look, there is not the slightest doubt the owners are serious. We aren't going to be able to keep 57. We'll be lucky to keep 50-50, and that's that. It's still a good deal. We'll get something else out of them. We'll, we'll, we'll negotiate in a way that we'll, we'll give, we'll take, we'll give, we'll take, but we're going to lose the big battle. The big battle is going to be lost, guys, but we'll keep some other stuff. If we can keep the hard cap, or we can keep it fine. But, the, the, but he should have prepared them that these guys are serious. I, if he didn't believe it, then he's stupid and should have been fired. If, if he believed it I mean, and, and, and thought he could find a way to work around it, then he's stupid and should have been fired. So I guess I'm saying that I don't think Billy Hunter's done a very good job. I trust in the, the, the um, goodwill and instincts and intelligence of Derek Fisher. Thank you. I agree. But I, I like Derek Fisher. I mean, you, you can't find a writer in a league that, that doesn't like Derek Fisher as a human being, and, and, and he's a smart and, and, and principled guy and all that. And he's trying to do the best for his guys, but, but it's a futile losing battle. I'm sorry. Bob, thanks so much for joining us. Your reputation precedes you. Um, enjoy the game tomorrow, and hopefully we'll be seeing an NBA season uh, fairly Let's enjoy soon. the game tomorrow. Let's enjoy the game tonight. That's the game I'm thinking about. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. All right, thanks much later, Bob. Thanks. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.